guys, I'm Sharpria Shine and welcome back to Max Out Girl. All right, ladies, today we have a very special guest, Nikki Winston. Hey. Thank you for coming on my podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Really now, this is going to be very special, ladies. She is a mother, a wife, a minister, a speaker, an author. And a bombshell, okay. <laughs> so we wanted to put her on here today, just have her shed some knowledge and some wisdom with us, because I like to say she's an expert with like love and dating and relationships and a godly example, and that's very important to me. So we want to talk about her book today. She has written a lot of books, so we're going to talk about that. But this book I just read, and you got to get your hands on it. We're going to tell you about that later. Mm -hmm. But how to win him? and keep him happy. Secrets to becoming an amazing wife. Y'all see I got my little notes, so we gonna get into it. <laughs> so tell me, what inspired you to write this book? Wait, first of all, you've been married how many years? It'll be 17 years in February. 17 years, y'all. 70, congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> so tell me about this. Um, well, I had, first of all, I had gone through some difficult things and some a hard marriage and everything, and, and I was married, uh, again, remarried, mm -hmm. and I had a lot of people around me, a lot of single women, okay. and they were seeking advice, and they wanted information, they wanted to know how to do it, yeah. and uh, I had learned a lot through what I had gone through, and I had deliberately studied. I had healed, I had forgiven, I had, you know, and then studied and, and understood how to do this right, mm -hmm. and I wanted to share my knowledge, so yeah. it actually came from, we did a Bible study, mm -hmm. let me even say, it was a group study, I'll we'll say, okay. um, and every month, once a month, for about a year, I had women come to my home, mm -hmm. and we sat in a circle, and we had very specific uh, topics that we would talk about with mm -hmm. marriage, Yeah. and so after the, at the end, you know, I think the last month was a celebration, so it was, I think, 11 topics, okay. 10 or 11, and then, um, you know, I, I kind of collected all the information I gathered, I made a lot of preparation for each, each okay. month, and... I, I, what I felt was most effective for the topics, and then I also surveyed the women. I had them do a, a survey mm -hmm. and took their feedback, and we made, I picked seven topics, we mm -hmm. made seven chapters, and so it came from study and feedback, and, yeah. you know, um, I just wanted to help women. That's awesome. I love Do that. marriage well. And then if you don't, so women who weren't married and uh -huh. wanted to be married, mm -hmm. or women who are already, already married and wanted to do it better, that's what that's for. No, I love it. So ladies, mm -hmm. you know, I just came up on my five-year anniversary. Woo -woo. Congratulations. So, thank Happy you. anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. So this book was amazing. And it was just right on time. And I did realize, I noticed that it's not just for, like you just said, married women, but also that aspire to yep. get married. And it was mm -hmm. really practical advice, which is really good. I loved thank it. You, and you. I want to get into some of the topics. Topics. Um, I was laughing with her before we started the podcast because I said it was a reminder, but some of them chapters were slapping me in my face. <laughs> was that's like, the point. <laughs> yeah. It's like, she said, yeah, that's the point. I was able to like kind of go off on you without really going yeah, off on you. Yeah, it's better to just give you the book <laughs> yeah. and let you read it than to be like, hey, yeah. listen, I need to talk to you about mm -hmm. something. Pull me aside, rebuke so. me. So I'm, no, but it's, it's we're, we're being funny, but serious at the same time. Yeah, but it, it, it's really rebuke in there and, and not in a bad way. It's so subtle, so sweet and, mm -hmm. and it gets you right back on track, you know, and that's what you want. You want to be able to get back on track or if you never were on the right track, find right. the track. Right? Can I just say, yeah. one time I had a wife read it and I gave her the book uh -huh. and I felt she needed it. Uh huh. And um, I gave her the book, and then the next time I saw her, she like cocked back like this, and she was like, "I have a bone to pick with you." And she was like, "Chapter one, really? <laughs> she did not like the selflessness chapter, really." Well, yeah. we're gonna get into that because uh, that's Perfect. needed. Yeah, that's absolutely. absolutely. Oh my, we're gonna talk about that. So we're gonna kind of get into it a little bit, kind of um, some quotes that stuck out to me or some sentences, and then we're gonna kind of talk about that. So chapter, well, this isn't even chapter one. This is the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> it already got us oh, there. Wow. Yes, <laughs> preparation precedes success. So let me just read this for you, ladies. When you marry, not only is it one of the single most important decisions you can ever make, it also becomes part of your God-given destiny. You must take it very seriously. This person becomes deeply intertwined with whatever it is that you're supposed to do while here on earth. Drop mic. Mm -hmm. I mean, right That's there. So I mean, right there, because I feel like, especially when I used to have my singles ministry, a lot of people sometimes, oh, I just want a boo, or I just want, you know, somebody to have you sex with, or vacation <laughs> with, or help with the bills, and it's like, 
Girl, it's so much more than that. <laughs> Come on, let's talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, it's good to want those things. That's yeah, fine. That's nothing fine. wrong with it. More importantly, want to be the best of those things for someone else. Mm -hmm. That is more important than what you're getting, honestly. Yeah. If I know how to be selfless, then where you fall short, I'm okay with. I can cover it. Mm -hmm. You know. And if I'm not ready to cover your shortcomings, yeah. I'm not ready to be married. And then as far as it being the most... Say that again. Yeah. If you're not ready. Uh, if I'm not ready to cover your shortcomings, mm -hmm. I'm not ready to be married. Colossians 3.13 in the mm -hmm. NLT mm -hmm. says that love covers each other's faults. Like, I, I or your weaknesses. I... I cover you, mm -hmm. the things that I don't like about you, yeah. the things that I don't like about you, I'm still covering. Yeah. So I just think it's really important to know yeah, that. That's good. That's but so good. it's an important decision in everything. Like if you, the things that you want to be in life or that you feel God has called you to be, mm -hmm. if you marry the wrong person, it's likely that you're not going to get there. Like oh, you can good. almost put a period on it, at least a, a long delay. Yeah. And then also, conversely the same the person that you marry if they are the right person you guys can like beeline toward purpose mm -hmm. that's the purpose of marriage yeah it's purpose yeah that's purpose I love that no that's so good because even though it's only been five years I could say like in my marriage I'm so glad I waited on God I didn't get married to my 30s and so but I'm so glad I waited on mm -hmm. the Lord because my husband is so supportive in what I do, and he's such an intricate part of what I do. Yes. And I can admit I couldn't do it without him, yeah. being honest. Yeah. So so I can attest, like, waiting on the Lord is so worth it. Yeah. And because you both have that purpose, and now you're helping each other fulfill that. Mm -hmm. So I love that. So when I read that, I was like, drop Mike, this book is already starting. You know, like, <laughs> like but that's so good, especially if someone isn't married yet, to yeah. know that. Just to have, you know, your focus and your heart in the right place. I think that's so important yeah. because it is so easy to to kind of not really think about that. Right. Like I like some people are just like, I know I want to be married and that's that. I get to choose who I want to marry and start and a family with it's whoever. Like, it's like I've never, ever, ever driven a car, not a what is that called? The the a go cart, nothing. Yep. And I just okay, go just go get in the car and drive. Yep. No, you're supposed to have now it's fifty hours of practice. And training. You have to go to class. My yeah. son right now is in driver's ed and he's driving and it's a lot of a lot of training. Yeah. And that's not even near one of the most important things you'll do in life. Yeah. Is that license. So the marriage license is a much more important it license. Is. You have to have training. Preparation is so key. And mm -hmm. my husband would always encourage the singles, he'd always say, like, prepare, prepare, prepare. Yeah. Like you may be single now, but prepare and and he would say he would go to marriage conferences and Aww. you know, be under married couples and try to learn. And that's awesome. And it is, but I was like, I wasn't doing that, Laura was I? nobody nobody told me to do Get it. Get you know? a man who go to the marriage conference single. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, I was a little bit different in my singleness. In my singleness, I was more concerned about making sure I was whole yeah. and healed mm -hmm. as a woman and, you know, not dependent on a man for my joy and happiness or purpose, but God. And, and that's just for me. I needed yeah. to get that right. That's, I'm in full agreement with yeah. that. that is I have to get that There's right. There's so many levels that you need to prepare Isn't for marriage. It? That's one of them. Yes. For sure. And that was where I was just so, because I romanticized marriage and being mm -hmm. in a relationship and I had always been in a relationship and I finally had to be single for years like no date no yeah. calls no none like wow. nothing it's hard when you look like this oh, you're it's, sweet but am I wrong yeah it's hard, guys always it, are yeah, kind, just always are, and it's like oh well this one's a this is a good guy yeah he's good quality yeah not bad looking. right he's got all the things yeah. he loves the lord how do I say no to this? Yep. Maybe this is it. You know, like it's, yeah. it's tough. And I went through it's that tough. a little and then mm -hmm. I and I kept hitting a brick wall every time. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Then, because you married the right man. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I kept hitting that brick wall or being hurt or whatever. And mm -hmm. I was like, and I finally had to just surrender to God Good. and say, Lord, I'm just relinquishing all of this to you. It's yeah. just me and you right now. And I need it best. That. Yeah. I, I really, I really need that. I'm so grateful. So yeah. when we talk about preparation, I just think that's just everything. And mm -hmm. that doesn't mean, ladies, you're going to be perfect. There's still a lot of learning that I need and that my husband needs and that we're going to need, you know, and I know mm -hmm. you talk about perfection in here. Oh, yeah. We're, talk a little bit about that. You talk about it's not perfect, yeah, being no, perfect. My but. husband and I are not perfect. That's yeah. the whole point. Like, it's... We're not perfect, but we're able to cover each other and support each other yeah. and point out when something's a little off and it's always loving and it's yeah. not ever critical or at least not overly critical because you yeah. can critique something yeah. and love, yeah. right? So it's, it's just um, perfection is not the goal. Prepared is the goal. Mm -hmm. And honestly, having the heart of God for someone. I want to be able to see you like Jesus sees yeah. you. So, um, and I, I, I truly, I feel like my husband sees me like the Lord sees me. Like yeah. he's just... 
so supportive. Awesome. It's almost funny to think about how supportive really? it is. Yeah, like yeah. I'll be like, I'll, I'll have like an issue with somebody, and I know this isn't the topic we're on. Go okay. ahead, girl. Like I'll have an issue, and I'm like, well, why are they doing this? And it's like, is it just me? Am I like this? You know, and you, you kind of think, is it you? And yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and then I'll say something, and he'll be like, no, they can't, they can't treat you like that. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You're like, like, it's not me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, right. And it yeah. just, I just feel so supportive yeah, about yeah. it sometimes. I love it. Um, and you know. They're validated. Yeah. Yeah. That's so awesome. I just, I don't know. That's not no, what we, that's okay. what we were talking about, but perfection is not the goal. Yeah. But you kind of, that, that's right on because you're kind of talking about covering each other and, mm-hmm. and then he's validating you. And yeah, because sometimes we want that, you know, oh, you, yeah. want, you need that, that yes. validation or that super, that, that extra support from your man. And it's nothing wrong yeah, with that. It's so. nice to know yeah. for sure someone actually is gaslighting you and there's another person who saw it and yeah like, you know. yeah You're, you feel like i'm not crazy i know I'm what i'm not I saw. crazy yeah yeah no it's awesome to have a husband just to feel that protection too and the covering yeah. it, it is yeah. it is um an amazing feeling so yeah. i love that i could i could definitely attest so ladies the first thing we're saying is prepare, prepare. and if they're already married mm-hmm. as far as preparation mm-hmm. what would you suggest Let, let's say if someone's like okay well I'm already married. Mm-hmm. We didn't do all of that. We didn't have premarital counseling. We didn't get to do any of those right, things. Right. What can they do now? Well, I mean, honestly, it's just go back to that driving thing. Yeah. Let's say you faked all your hours <laughs> and you, you know, didn't take the class. I, don't, I was from New York. We didn't have to take driver's ed. And you're not a great driver. And there's your record is showing. You guys that. definitely should have had to take driver's ed. <laughs> well, most people don't drive there, right? Uh, no, no, no. I'm not from the city. Oh, so, okay. Yes, we I drive. See. Um, I'm from like Central New York, Syracuse. I lived in Long Island, but okay, people drive Long Island. But um, uh, it's you can always go back and get training. You can always yeah. go back, like your husband did single. You can all go back married. Go yeah. to those marriage conferences. Go to the classes at our church, even and go yeah. to the classes that the marriage seminars and any workshops. Yeah. Read books. Read this book. It's a good book. Ladies. You're married, so just it's like prepare. Just prepare yeah. now, even though you're already yeah. in the place. It's okay. It's all right. You're yeah. forgiven. Blood of Jesus. <laughs> and now move forward and get better. Yeah, I actually better. repented after reading this book. Aww. Now, I'm not saying, Praise ladies, that I've just been a horrible wife. Not even saying that, no. but when you want to improve and you want to be better, um, and we're going to get into it where you talk about wanting to bless your husband, you know, mm-hmm. and and I had to just think, okay, am I, are my motives to bless my husband all the time? Or mm-hmm. what are my motives in yeah, these situations? There's some situations where my motives, you think, oh, I'm doing this, but you talked about it. We're all over the place, but this is good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you <laughs> talked about it where it's like, you can do the right thing with the wrong motives. And if you do that, it's still wrong. Right. Absolutely. You know? Cause Absolutely. I, Cause I'm going to say something. Cause it's all about what's in here. Yeah. Because my husband guys is in this room, but, but I'm going to say it. He'll be Go fine. Ahead. Go ahead. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are times where I might say something or do something. Cause I'm just like in my mind, sorry, babe but it's the truth the Mm -hmm. lord rebukes me like i just want him to be quiet i'm just gonna (laughs) say this to get out the way because Mm -hmm. i'm mad or i'm irritated and so that's not his fault Mm -hmm. i gotta work on myself because i'm a little feisty nikki i don't know if you're feisty i (laughs) i am doing really good for myself if you know what I'm saying. 100%. I yeah. understand. Yes. I'm doing really good for myself. And people who know me, I'm not a troublemaker. I'm not even argumentative. No. But. You might be quick to say the thing. That, that yeah, is, yeah, yeah. 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 So I think marriage will definitely, it's, it'll teach you humility. Yeah. And to be quiet. Yeah. And to take that issue to the Lord because mm-hmm. you're not going to fix it with your mouth type right. of a thing. Right. Right. And so I definitely think that it's just so good, this book, because it, it was just a reminder. I haven't mm-hmm. been just wild and now and disrespecting my no, husband. Right, right, right. I know better I can, than that. I couldn't even imagine No, it. I'm not right. like that. But it's just little things of the heart that the mm-hmm. Lord knows that it's like, okay, the Lord knows. He may never know if I said something in my head, but right. the Lord knows. He might even know, not know that little reason you're doing the yeah, thing. Yeah, but yes. the Lord knows. Mm-hmm. And if my life is to please the Lord right. and I'm mm-hmm. to honor the Lord in my marriage, it doesn't yeah. matter what my husband does, what am I doing? Right. Because and if you're knows. trying to please the Lord, then how you treat your husband yes. absolutely matters. Yes. And what's coming, where it's coming from absolutely yes. matters. And that take some work sometimes yes mm-hmm. and i'm proud of you for i mean yeah. repenting i know that's my yeah, yeah. But because because it shows the humility yeah so you can be feisty and humble <laughs> you know what's that? also just put this out there no you're not asking but you can be a louder person uh-huh. and more demonstrative mm-hmm. and animated and still have a quiet and gentle spirit Yes. And I'm just saying that to all the people out there who think that you have to be, like, the woman has to be quiet 
yeah. and seem meek to have a quiet and gentle spirit. That's not what that means. Yeah. It's peaceful. Yeah. Like you're seeking peace. You're pursuing peace. And mm-hmm. you can pursue peace talking loudly. So <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Are you allowed? I would say you're um, not. I can be loud. Okay. I can. I have like a, you know, yeah, yeah, a yeah. loving tone. Yes. I have a loving tone. Okay. But I am not quiet. a quiet person. And that's how and I am. I'm talkative too. Yeah, I, I could see, I could see that, and I, yeah, I'm not quiet right. either. You know what I'm talking about. You yeah. know, have you ever? I don't know. When I was younger, mm-hmm. I used to see the girls, like the quiet girls, and I'd yeah. be like, okay, today I'm going to be one of those. Yeah, and I would try, and I would get to class yeah. in high school, and like five minutes, five work. minutes in, I'd be <laughs> like a silly, just a goofball. You're like, I can't do and this. Yeah, I just can't. Yeah. I just can't. I was talkative. So. <laughs> I remember it might have been the third grade or second grade, and my teacher was like she's conscientious and she's this and just all this and I have good grades yeah same. I mean mm-hmm. but I guess you know you can be smart and distracting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was distracting was the word that was yeah. consistent for, yeah, yeah. with my teachers really <laughs> I was, yeah I was very talkative yeah but it paid off now a lot yes of those, yeah I talk it's what I do yeah you bless people I talk for the Lord yes there you go yeah that's what we do so, now so yep. teachers yes. you're wrong no <laughs> okay ladies we know we're, we're gonna yes, get back on, topic. back on topic so I want to read this We've got to move out of a receiving posture and into a giving posture. Marriage should not be about what a man can give you. Rather, it should be a sense of love. I'm sorry, let me read that again. You want to make sure you understand. Marriage should not be about what a man can give you. Whether it be a sense of love, affirmation, and approval, provision, stability, status, sex, or even a feeling of completion. We can't go into a relationship looking primarily to get our needs met. I'm going to skip down. Marriage is not about who you can love, take care of, fill all your emotional holes, and make it so that you don't have to work anymore. Ladies, Mm -hmm. because you know some of Mm -hmm. (laughs) y'all. It's about who you can love, serve, and take care of. Marriage takes a selfless, I highlighted that, ladies, that's for me, a selfless servanthood attitude from both parties. So it's both parties, ladies, but if Mm -hmm. your husband doesn't do it, God will honor you doing it, okay? Um, It's work, yes, but it's absolutely worth it. If you come into relationships and marriage with the attitude of how much can I add to this person's life, I guarantee it will make you happy. Absolutely. How much can I add? Because, wow. Because even if he's not giving, giving, giving to you, mm-hmm. if you're like, okay, it'll make me happy to give, 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 mm-hmm. you'll be able to, you'll have an opportunity to give. Whether yeah. he's giving or whether he's not, you can give. And so if, if, if I'm serving you and that's what's making me happy, that's the, that's where I'm going to find my pleasure in marriage and mm-hmm. I'm going to be happy. Yeah. Cause you're doing, you're going to, cause you can, you can, you can control that is what I'm trying mm-hmm. to say. Yeah. You can yeah, control you that. Can control you can't control him. You can't right. control his reaction. You can control that. And even in that, I believe God honors that where if you have a godly husband who's seeking the Lord, he will speak to your husband Absolutely. on your behalf yeah. or he'll say, go do this or go do that, you know? Yeah. Or go get her flowers. And honestly, we're all influenceable, right? Yes. So, you know, who you hang out with, you become most like. Mm-hmm. If I serve you and I do it no, without complaint, without a bad attitude, I do it with a good attitude, mm-hmm. I am going to rub off on you. Yeah. If That's I'm good. doing it like, oh, fine, I have to do this. <laughs> like, that might be how you do it back to me. Yeah. But if I'm just always trying to serve you, maybe it's not a lot, maybe you don't see a lot, but you're going to see more and more of you in yeah. him. So if I'm going to see more of me in you, don't I want to be the best me? Because I want yeah. some good stuff back. That's good. That's and really yes, good. women are responders. I feel like you probably get it in the comments. Mm-hmm. Women are responders. It's true. A man naturally leads his home. And what I mean by that is, a man doesn't have to tr- even have to try and he's leading his wife because we respond to what they're giving, what they're putting out. Yeah. However, we are still both human beings mm-hmm. and even though we're husband and wife, we're still friends. And if I'm giving to you and I've got a great attitude about it, mm-hmm. you're going to start reflecting that yeah. after a while. It's, it's inevitable. I love that. No, that's good advice, honestly. So I'm going to move on to, because it's so much in here, but let's talk about the selflessness. Okay. So you said basically the overall um, concept is that if you're going to be married, you have to kind of have a posture of servanthood, right? Mm -hmm. Servanthood or being selfless. Talk about that a little bit. Um, Well, it's it. it, First of all, marriage is about serving each other. That's Mm -hmm. if you had to. Well, okay. So I think the first purpose of marriage is the purpose of God. Yes. Right. Um, God works in multiplication. I don't know if you're going to bring that up, but we are called together to be a more powerful force for the kingdom of God. It's biblical. We find it in the Bible. Two, one can put thousands of flight. Two, ten thousand. Yes. We multiply our power mm-hmm. for the Lord, for a purpose, if once we're together. Okay. Yes. Number one. Mm-hmm. But serving another person is the number one goal for you in marriage. Because 
you know what? It's not before before long. Most likely, you're also gonna have more people to serve. You better get used to it. So um, having that attitude of servanthood. I mean, we kind of already touched on it. Yeah. If, if you, if I yeah, we did get joy out yeah. of serving you, yeah. I'm gonna be happier serving you. If I come into this thinking I'm not going to, not only am I gonna be a honestly a bad spouse mm-hmm. because I'm not doing things for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not thinking of you. I'm not considering you first. But um, things aren't gonna be as good in the home. Mm -hmm. So think about it this way, like, okay, we'll take dishes, for example. Mm -hmm. One of the main things that my husband and I argue about, we argue sometimes, Mm -hmm. but it's almost always about who's gonna do the work. The dishes? Yeah, dishes or something. So dishes, for example, it's like, I (laughs) do hate dishes. No, no, I don't mind doing the dishes. No, I'll start, I'll like walk over and turn the water on and he'll be like, I was going to do the dishes. And I'm like, what? Like, I'm, oh, I'm doing those. Like, no, you're not. I'm clearly like, move. Or, or like, I'll say, hey, I'll, (laughs) or so I'll plan on doing them. Maybe I'll, you know, something will happen. It's nighttime. I'm going to do them or I'm going to do them in the morning, whatever. And he'll start. I'm like, no, because he's already done a lot that day. And I was yeah, like, I just want to do, do it. Yeah. And he's like, no, no, I just, I'm already here. I'm already here. I'm doing it. You know. And so we'll argue about who's gonna do. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like yeah. we'll be trying to serve each other. Yeah. And that will literally has Turn caused into argument. actual arguments. <laughs> yes. So sometimes I'll be like, hey, it'll be seven o'clock at night. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna do the dishes in the morning. You have to tell. Please me. don't do them tonight. Yeah. And sometimes that won't work either. He'll he just the dishes. Yes. It. So um. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. So now. Go back to what we were saying, uh-huh. servanthood. If nobody is serving, if I'm not, half of the things aren't getting done, That's right? True. So now you have a messy house, stuff, dishes stinking in the sink, <laughs> yep. garbage not taken out, yeah. kids not taken care of, being, you know, driven places, food not cooked. Yeah. Like something's not going to happen because yeah. it takes two people in this household to run this household. Yeah. So either you're doing everything or half of it's not getting done. Mm. And now you kind of have like a... Un, I don't say unhappy, but unpleasant home life yeah. because stuff's not getting done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. Things are messy or yeah. whatever it is. Well, that's and good. that's just physical. Yeah. But you know that stuff, that thing, that, that um, what's surrounding you affects you mentally yeah. and emotionally. That's good. So it's important. Yeah. And you're really neat. I found that out. So I, love, <laughs> I love that. I love that. I like to be. I like no, to be. No, I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> so I want to jump to, and we may jump back, but let's jump into, because I know we can't hit it all. The three needs of a man. Ooh, I like talking about that. Saucy. <laughs> so why don't you tell us about that? I know we have um, a chapter in the back, but I want you to tell us some of those three needs. Well, one that's really important that I think men, women, excuse me, don't love to hear about is respect. Yep. That's a good one. So, because they're like, respect? Why does he need so much respect? Why yeah. we always talk about men getting respect? Yeah. And it's like, well, okay, so first of all, mm-hmm. <laughs> calm down. Yeah. Take it's a deep breath, ladies. Yeah. It's Take not as bad as you think. <laughs> yeah, because what respect is and what it yeah. translates is so different. So we say we need love, right? I want to yeah. be loved. I want to be validated. I want to, whatever, define love for you, that's what you need, right? Yeah. So respect for a man, it feels the same as us being loved. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it feels like love for them. Yeah. If love for you feels like warm soup. Respect for a man who's like warm soup. To them. Hot. I guess hot soup. But not so hot. Yeah. Like the right temperature. Like right. <laughs> Just right. Um, and so it, it's... Think of it as something more sensitive and more delicate than... Oh man, I want respect. Yeah. I yeah. mean, maybe that is kind of how it can come off sometimes. Mm-hmm. But that's because they are a rougher being like yeah. you know we're more refined we're mm-hmm. delicate we're graceful we move yeah. like this they're just kind of like <laughs> you know so it come when when they communicate certain things it comes, it off, comes off harder rougher. Sometimes. their body language is, is a little rougher yeah. just in general so first of all that's one lesson is it's okay for a man to be a little rougher around the edges than you mm-hmm. because he's a man and if you want a man like you're attracted to a man because he's manly yeah and then ma- be mad at him for being manly you're like okay you know, <laughs> there's certain things like body language yeah you, you yeah. know okay hey babe tone that down a little please you know mm-hmm. and if you have a loving relationship you're like oh sorry yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know but um okay so respect um it's it's it translates to them like you care about them, yeah. you love them, mm-hmm. you revere them. It's not like um, they're trying to lord anything over right. you. If they're or trying control to control you, you, then they're wrong. Yes. Right? Respect is is a, when you appreciate someone for what they have done mm-hmm. or what they didn't do that you don't, don't like. Yeah. Right? You know, I asked you not to do this and you didn't do it. You haven't done it all week and I really appreciate it. I yeah. feel so much better now that yeah. this is out of our lives or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or I, you know, you... 
thank you so much. You're such a good provider. Even if you, as a wife, make half the money, yeah. you can still thank your yes, husband you for what he does. Yes. And so thank you so much. You you know, you work so hard. Every day you leave and you come back and whatever. And yeah. You just, that's respect. Mm-hmm. Okay, respect doesn't always have to be, I'm going to do everything you say. Right. And it, that's not what it means. Mm-hmm. It's not... Um, they're not, not your controlling dad. things. Yeah, yeah. you said not your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, yeah. Have, you don't have to say some, yes, sir. I know some of the ladies are probably like feel that way. Like he's not my father, and I'm an adult too, and I make my money. But I love what you're saying. Like they just want to feel, like you said, how we want to feel love. They mm-hmm. want to feel love, but that equals respect. In it the works. World. Yeah, the way you yeah. communicate it. There you now, go. Okay, so let's say I want to feel yeah. loved, and I say this is how you love me, like this, this, and this, mm-hmm. and you're sure that you will feel so loved if he does that. But if he says, don't tell me how to love you, I'm going to love you however I want to love you. Sometimes that's the approach women take. Like, don't like, tell me how to treat you, how to respect you. Yeah. Like, there is a, in here, there's like an algorithm mm-hmm. for how to respect a man. Yep. There, it's very specific. It's highlighted. You don't even have to, <laughs> you don't even have to guess. Yeah. I tell you exactly what to do. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if you as a woman could tell your husband or a man mm-hmm. or someone, maybe I could tell them, mm-hmm. here's three steps to make sure we feel incredi- incredibly loved. Yeah. Do these things, just do them. Mm-hmm. Because you love her. Maybe they're not super, like, they don't have to come from your heart. Just yeah. do them. Yeah. And you'll feel amazing. Wouldn't you be so excited to know that he's doing those things and he does and you feel loved? Yeah. So why Absolutely. don't we just do the things? Yeah, just, just do Just do it. these three things. Mm-hmm. And he'll feel amazing. Keep it simple. He'll, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, keep it simple. Absolutely. Well, we know the next one is food, ladies. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, we heard what what is it? Um, a way to a man's heart is through his stomach. One hundred percent. I've heard that so much. I, I'm not trying to like jump ahead, but jump if ahead. If you're not married, come on, and you would like someone to have be you, interested, if you have an opportunity to feed them. Now, don't be weird. Don't like make a casserole and bring it to church to some man you've never talked to before. And say, God, don't you? That's my husband or something. Okay, hey, <laughs> he thinks that's weird. That's weird. <laughs> but. Now, you've been talking to him. Let's say you've been talking. Yeah. Every Sunday you're talking. He talks about how much he likes lasagna. You're like, oh, I make lasagna. Mm-hmm. Oh, you do? Yeah, this is how. And maybe you have these conversations, mm-hmm. and y'all have a good... Um, like rapport. Thank you. Yeah. Rapport. That's exactly the word I was looking for. Uh, yeah. Then be like, you know, I made some lasagna. Here's a here's a, a part of it. <laughs> Not, a Not the whole lasagna. You can have some yeah. of it. I thought you might... Yeah. He's going to love that. Okay, so you just there's a there's a fine line between weird and not weird, right? And I'm saying that because I've known some women who've been weird and threw them off. Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. So sorry. Back no, to, I love that. So food. Um, no, I, think women, I have to interject because I have a funny story okay, that please. I know of someone who she couldn't cook at all, okay. and so she'd have her mom cook meals while mm-hmm. they were dating, and she would pretend like it was hers, and they got no. married. Oh, deception! They ended up getting oh. married. <laughs> And then what? And he realized she couldn't cook. But after they were married, after they were married, don't deceive your man. That's terrible. <laughs> Do now, not deceive now, him. She did like start learning. Learning, of course. I would. But why so. deceive him in the first place? Just learn how to cook. Let me just tell you. I'll be transparent. When I met my husband, okay, I I grew up in the arts. I did not grow up in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. I know that sounds really bad, but no, I was just always so busy in school doing stuff. So I didn't I didn't learn to cook. So mm-hmm. when I met my husband. I could only cook like I would cook sometimes. It would just be like salmon or or chicken breast or Which fish great. with vegetables Lots and rice, of protein for the muscles. But that's all that I cook. That's literally. <laughs> and so our place of cont- contention has been what we're gonna eat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh... So when we first got married, I wasn't working, so I cooked everything. My sister was laughing at me. She's like, "Are you gonna continue this? Because the way you start." You're going to have to continue. Because mm-hmm. when we first got married, I would cook like breakfast, lunch, dinner. Oh, fresh, really? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, fresh. Wow. I was just like, this is, you know. And then. Oh, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> That's so much work. But I think that was bad because then I tanked. Oh. I was just, just like, like I don't know what else to cook. I'm tired of this. And then we were like, well, my husband especially, I want to eat healthy. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. But that healthy diet changed a lot. Mm -hmm. So we finally went vegan. And it's a lot of work. And a lot of work. So I was like, I'm going to be Miss Betty Crocker. I'm going to get these cookbooks. So I was getting stuff online, like Mm -hmm. recipes. And I was cooking all of this vegan stuff and vegan stuff. And then I just burned out after a while. Like I was doing it. And now, can I be honest, I just needed your book to remind me that food was important. Because (laughs) I... We eat out a lot, and Mm -hmm. then we, yeah, and so now we were looking to some other options because of that, but I feel like when I'm not in a busy season, when I'm not doing shows and Mm -hmm. stuff, Mm -hmm. I can do better, you know? I actually think cooking is in seasons. 
Okay. Actually, for, at least in my experience. Yeah. Is. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying you don't cook some seasons, yeah. but some seasons you're just like, it's like your creative outlet. It's like, oh, I'm going to yeah. do this. And like when you first became yes. vegan, probably. Yes. And then we after a while, it's like, stuff. I cooked so many things. <laughs> But let me yeah. let me just free your soul and free the souls of the women in here. <laughs> um, you don't have to be a great cook, at least to begin with. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be a great cook. Food doesn't say it. You probably read it. It doesn't yeah. say you need to know how to be a great cook. Right. It said you need to feed him. You yep. need to care it's about just his be belly. Responsible enough to. Right. That's what you are in charge of. You're right? responsible yeah. for it, and it's not even like now. Let's say you're in, in the type of relationship where he's responsible for food for whatever okay. reason. Usually, if that's the case, the man wants to be responsible because for food. he's a good cook or something. Right. Yeah. Right. Like I know this couple in, that immediately came to mind, and he is a chef. Mm. And he loves to cook. Yeah. And she loves to eat his food. That works really, really well. Yeah. So he feeds the family. Okay. okay. I mean, she will. Makes she sense. too. Yeah. yeah. But he's the primary person. Right. It works like that. He loves it. But what what I'm saying is you need to care that he eats. Mm-hmm. You need to care about his food. Yeah. So let's say you cook just a couple times a week. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're either, either you're planning ahead mm-hmm. or you're driving home from work and you're like, hey, babe, I'm... I'm on my way. Mm-hmm. I was going to, do you want to, me to pick up Chipotle for us? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, and then there are those times, and this happens with our family, mm-hmm. where I have a responsibility and I can't, whatever, or maybe I had a responsibility and I could have, but I did. Ba- I was bad planning. Mm-hmm. And I'll say, hey, I forgot to think about <laughs> dinner tonight <laughs> and I'm over here doing this thing, you yeah. know, speaking, you know, maybe the women's yeah. events or whatever. Yeah. Uh, can you, you know, I say, like, yeah, I got it. Now, he, he's never been like, oh. you know yeah. why? Because he knows I care about his stomach, and I'm usually feeding yeah. him. You know what I mean? So he like knows I, you must really need him to help. Yes, his and it's, yeah. he's like, "I'll come to the rescue," yeah. and he feels good about it. And I thank him because I respect him, yes. and I just really appreciate it. Or I'll be like, or I, maybe I'll offer to now in the, this day and age, door order door, yeah, yeah. I'll just, or DoorDash or Uber Eats something to the house, yeah. or I'll do it already, mm-hmm. and I'll be like, "Hey, I'm you know obviously not coming yeah. home, but yeah. food will be there at six thirty. Yeah. yeah. You know? That's good. Yeah. So it's a matter of caring that he eats because yeah. he feels loved and cared for if you're not forgetting. I know a woman. <laughs> this must be shameful. I don't know if I put it in there. I don't think I did. I, but I might have. Did. I know a woman who would cut, like, maybe this isn't as bad. It was so bad to me. What? She would, on a regular basis, come home from work and pick herself up food and not, and not talk up. to him, not offer him, not say anything. Yeah, that he is, would get that home thinking terrible. they were going to eat food together oh, somehow, no. and she'd be like eating Chick Fil A. And they were married. They were married. She would literally. She just acted single. That's acting single. Okay, yeah. She'd ladies, be eating do her that. dinner when he got home from work, <laughs> and it's not. It'd be one thing if that was like their culture, but he came home thinking we're going to eat together. We're going to go get Did some. Did she food. ever fix it? Not, not that you know of. I talked to her about it. I think it got a little better, but it didn't. It didn't get completely better. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, ladies, make sure you feed your man, whether you cook or you don't feed right. your husband. Right. <laughs> like, or, or care that it's that it's. Or talk about it. Let's go out together and get it. Yeah. So Absolutely. I have. Look, I'm telling it myself a little bit, but my husband knows it. So I'm probably spoiled because <laughs> probably when I have kids, that'll. But I'm so used to my husband going like everywhere with me. Oh, and so, so nice. yeah, but I got to get out of that. I feel like, and the only reason why I say that, first of all, because here's how I'm thinking. You can get more done sometimes when you just say, hey, you go do this, I go do like that. Like you go to the grocery store and you yeah. go get the, the dry aisles and I yes. go to the meats. No, yeah. or you um, go take care of the car and I oh, go to the grocery store. Oh, I see what like, you're saying. You, know, you, literally you can do more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. not saying you should never. It's fun to go, you mm-hmm. know, together. But, you know, sometimes because I'm so used to that, it's like a security blanket. And I've never been like that. I always was like Miss Independent. Mm-hmm. And then when I got married, it's just like I was so just used to being, maybe because we were kind of newly wedged. But you know what? You like your husband and that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, it, it's true. It, it's if you didn't want him around, yeah, that would be a big problem. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was a reason because yeah. I was I was on the phone. Three people. I went to go get us some food one day, and the ladies there, she's they're used to seeing us together. So she mm-hmm. was like, "What's wrong?" Oh no, that. And then my mother called me the other day, and she's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm picking up dinner." And she's like, "Um, I'm shocked Lewis isn't with you." And then like my sister called wrong. me. Yeah, and I'm like, okay. If people think that it's like the end of the world because my husband is not with me, <laughs> something needs to change. Yes, yes, yes. And then he can get more of his stuff done, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Around the house when I'm not there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I noticed that. I'm like, that 
just to split it, I'm gonna. But I know we have kids that all differ anyway. Yes. Because like, so you'll need to be. You'll need to things. do different but things. But I'll tell you yeah. what: if you guys like each other and you want to be around each other, and he wants to come with you, check the temperature. Make sure he wants to come with you. Right. But that's true. Why not be with each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand though. <laughs> yeah. But it's wonderful that you guys like each other's company so much. We do. We do. I, I'm more of a sometimes like I need a little bit of space and he and he was like well I didn't get married to not be with my wife and I, I, thought I that, love that <laughs> so I was like okay that's cute okay I get it so I've I've reframed my mind around it a little because at first I was like no we need our space and but, I'm just, but when I do that sometimes mm-hmm. then I miss them <laughs> and you're like yeah have done it yeah but that's a good moment because yeah you, you need to miss them too I think mm-hmm. that's good and I always tell them like that's actually healthy that's good because yeah. then if I'm irritated or something and you you know you go get your space you come mm-hmm. back you miss them you're ready to talk and yeah. you're so but I, I do think kids kids will change that just a little because yeah. one um <laughs> one of you will be with the child so much that it's like oh good I can have you some can take space now. now yeah like it's just you know and then also things like like with the stage we're at with Practices tonight, we have two practices. One is from six thirty or no six forty-five to eight, and the other one is from seven thirty to nine. Both kids or two different children. Two different two children. Di- two different children. Okay. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah. There's... Someone has to get this one. Someone has to get. Yeah. That. Now in this case, it's a little different because God loves me so much. Ooh, uh, and what changed? This is. We're now, all off so I know. Ladies. Now they practice at the same place. Oh, just, that's awesome. Yeah, so okay. I mean, so, it worked out. Yeah, we just have to kind of arrange with timing, but um, it's that's much better. But there's still someone, if if nothing else, someone's taking them. The other one's home, okay, cooking, preparing, yeah. cleaning up, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. You know, yesterday there was a basketball game. I had to cook, package up Lily's, bring it. David met me from work. Yeah, he took the food because he drives a little to the thing, and I taught the class. So you guys are kind of like, yeah, we just kind of you figure it out, yeah, but you, you, there's, manage you it can't all. be together. Yeah, because there's. Different things happening at different you times. you got to handle all the different things. Mm-hmm. See, and that's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, like, um, once the kids go... Yeah. I don't it's, mean, just, it's like it's, a force, it's, it's but it's happen. okay. Yeah. It feels good. At the end of the day, you're like, we did it. Teamwork. Yeah, we got mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, ladies, we know we got off. We were talking about food. Yeah. Feed your man. Now, the Feed last him. one is sex. Sex. Yeah. Yes. So, let's get into the Only if you're married. We're not talking about those mm-hmm. who are dating. So Those who are dating are super excited about that part anyway. <laughs> They're like, yes! Sex! When I get married, I have sex all the time. Yeah. Like, five times a yeah, day. Yeah, they're excited. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, you're not. No. You're going to do it. You're not. <laughs> calm down. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. So... <laughs> Um, that is one of the basic needs of a man. Yeah. And, and I don't think anybody's surprised at that one. No. Honestly. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty... You want to talk about it a little yeah, bit? Yeah, sure. We can preface it by saying, just for people who are married, mm-hmm. there is that exception. There's there's a percentage of men who either want it less than their wife mm-hmm. or have trouble. Okay? Okay. So we're going to take those. We're going to put them here for now. Okay. Acknowledge that that is a real thing. And there's things, ways you can work out. You know, when there's trouble with it, mm-hmm. there's there you should seek out some help. And I'm saying that because it exists... And inevitably, you get someone coming back and being like, hey, you know, not everybody's like that. And yeah. So here you, so you have go. to say that. Yep. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, men have more of a drive than women. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they want it more. They usually want it more often. Mm-hmm. They'd be happy yes. with it more often. Um, and so can I just get right to the... You can get the, right the, to the, the go good ahead. practice. Yep. Is talk about frequency. It's very healthy and a very good idea for to sit down and say, in a perfect world... Not not with you, Sharbria. Mm-hmm. Not with you, David. Mm-hmm. You know, like, just yeah. in general, how often would my body, mm-hmm. so my drive, mm-hmm. would I want to have sex? Like, mm-hmm. almost like would I, I don't say need it, but okay. you see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. What would my number be? Okay. My ideal number. Per week, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. per week, and for some people, or it's less often than that. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so just put that out there yeah, for, yeah. The pe- for, the, for the viewers. So it's okay? not right or wrong, whatever works for the couple. To help your YouTube comments so yeah. you don't get too much of <laughs> But yeah, some people are, have different numbers. Yep. Yeah. So so a woman might say, I want, I would like to do it this often. Mm-hmm. This was how, you know, and, and it's not about you. It's yeah. not about how attracted I am to you. This is my body, right? Mm-hmm. And he says, well, this is how often my body would like that release. Mm-hmm. And so you come together and you say, okay, let's agree mm-hmm. and truly agree. Yeah. This is what our, our goal is. We're going to shoot for this. Mm-hmm. And the reason you do that is for a few reasons. Because sex is so important to him, not just the physical need for it, mm-hmm. but the emotional reassurance that you trust and love and respect me enough to let me inside of your body. Mm-hmm. That's a big, big deal, deal, especially in marriage. If I trust you enough to, like, 
literally physically mm -hmm. open myself up completely to you mm -hmm. that says something about how I feel about you yeah um there's so much to say about that but that's why some men who don't have it together mm -hmm. will try to force that issue mm -hmm. is because it's so important to them they feel so invalidated they feel so insecure yeah. and and we know that when someone feels insecure they get kind of they, they can get pushy or controlling mm -hmm. and so that's why some will push it like that is mm -hmm. because it's that important it's it's like a it's an emotional reassurance if, if you're not allowing me to have sex with you as a man mm -hmm then you, I feel like you don't trust me, mm -hmm. you don't love me, you don't respect me, you don't mm -hmm. want me, you don't want me as a person, mm -hmm. not just physically. Yeah. You know, so it's just, it's just, it's very important and very, it's a delicate, uh, deep issue for him. Mm -hmm. So you got to care about him in that way. Yeah. If I'm loving you like a brother, then I care about your feelings in yeah. that way. Yeah. So, so I know I'm, I'm kind of jumping subjects no, to good. the frequency. It does this. Let's say we're going to just, give a pretend scenario. Let's say yeah. a man says, well, I'd like to, I'd love to do it every day. Yeah. And a woman says, well, okay, I really only need it like once a week. Okay. Well, then you say, okay, well, we're going to shoot for three times a week, every yeah. other day. You know, that's what we're going to shoot for as a goal. All right. <coughs> so that means that if it's Wednesday, let's say, let's say it's Thursday and the last time you did it was Monday, right? Mm -hmm. So usually it'd be Monday, Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. But now it's Thursday. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to wonder. And I promise you consciously or subconsciously, some men wonder this. Am I ever going to have sex with my wife again? <laughs> right? I mean, that's like a, like, when is it ever going to happen again? Yeah. He doesn't have to because he says, well, we've agreed to approximately every other day. Mm -hmm. And that already happened yesterday. So I know it's going to happen soon. Mm -hmm. I can feel reassured. Mm -hmm. We've agreed to it. Yeah. We've had the conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be insecure. Yeah. And that's a very reassuring thing. Mm -hmm. So the conversation is reassuring. Whether, whether you really want it. Or it takes another day. Mm -hmm. He just has that he feeling. He knows like, it's coming. Yeah. There are men, a lot of men in marriages that are wondering if they're ever going to have sex with their wife again or how long it will be because they think it will be a long, oh, long wow. time. Yeah, and it hurts mm -hmm. because it's like, well, first of all, now I have to sit there and wonder, why don't you want to have sex with me? Mm -hmm. Do you want me anymore? Do you want somebody else? Like, yeah. There's a lot of questions that will swirl mm -hmm. for a man. But if I just say, here, yeah. then it's like, oh, you want me. Yeah. Physically it reassures them. Yes, mm -hmm. and you love me enough to let me inside of your body. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a very important and delicate issue. Yeah. That being said, um, <clears throat> frequency. Okay. So then the, there's then for us. Okay. There's so many ways to talk about this. <laughs> um, I know you can't cover it all. Let's say you only so really are interested in it about once a week, like for the for your pleasure, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't have to be fantastic yeah. every time. Yeah. It has to be for you. Which you did. <laughs> Which you did. Yeah, yeah, for the woman. You did put that in the book. Yeah. Right. It just needs to, you just need to. Release. Hold up your end of the bargain. Yeah. No, but for the, for the times that. Oh, so let's okay. say once a week you want the release, right? <laughs> yeah. Your release. Mm -hmm. Well, then, you know, then the other times it can be for him. It can be. Quick or not quick, whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, this is the important part. What it is can't be is a chore. You can't right. be like, fine. Yeah. I said I'd do it. It's mm -hmm. Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It ha you and, and I know I said it. Yeah, but ladies, you gotta get the books. We talk just about put it. a smile on your yeah, face. Yeah. And she talks about it a little deeper. So you and I get the say book. act like you want it, but I don't mean fake like you mm -hmm. want it. Meaning just like you love them. Well, it's like, true. I mean, Nobody want wants you it to be if, happy. if you're like. Right. I mean, who would, you wouldn't even want. Right. That, it wouldn't so, be good. Yeah. But but like like I love you and I want I want happiness for you. Yeah. So I'm gonna do this with a smile and mm -hmm. good attitude and you know. Yeah. I also this is kind of a side note, but what? I am anti fake it. Don't fake it. I'm talking. <laughs> you knew y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Don't fake it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't help anybody. You know what that is? Mm -hmm. That's a lie yeah. and that's deception. Yeah. So. You know, yeah, that because that's something that you can work on together. Yeah. And if things aren't working well, work you can on find it together, a solution. communicate, and then think about how good it is if you find the solution. But if yeah. you're faking it, you never, you never, the problem find never gets fixed that way. Problem that's will good, never get fixed. yeah, because this is such a I don't want to say taboo, it shouldn't be taboo subject, but sometimes mm -hmm. people are afraid to talk about this, yeah. And I think it is so important because God definitely wants you to be satisfied in your sexual relationship, mm -hmm. and there's always a solution. and uh, sometimes yeah. you can feel like it isn't, but there always is. There's and always so I thought that was really good when you're talking about that in the book. So ladies, so we got, what was number one? Respect. Respect. Feed them. Food. <laughs> Food. Yeah. Yes. Keep them yeah. fed. Yeah. And then sex. 
Yes. Often or whatever and, your schedule you yeah. agree upon. And have the conversation. Yeah. Maybe have that frequency conversation once every year or two because yeah. you're going to change. So this is funny. I love when you put this. I'm going to put it out there where you said if there's something you didn't like or something, like don't in the middle of it just be like, uh-uh, that ain't right. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you will hurt their feelings. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, no, I don't like that. <laughs> this ain't working. Like, no, no, no. And I, I correct up when I read that. Like, you this say, chapter was really hey, good. Can we try this? Yeah. That's a no, nice it's so way to do funny it. because I know just that there are words. I, you know women. You know that that's happening. Mm-hmm. Like, you know how we can be sometimes. So it's so funny that you put, you put that because yeah. that could be so uncomfortable or embarrassing or just awkward. Yeah. Well, and then, of course, then a lot of times maybe he's not any into it anymore. You, you and you're like, why aren't you into it anymore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so you feel rejected. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. everyone feels bad. But yeah. so instead of a no or an uh-uh or, you know, just tr- just use positive words instead of negative words. Yep, yep. So, like, can we, so to, can we switch to this? Yeah. Can we try this? You know. That's funny. Ladies, <laughs> you got to get this book. We don't have time because we would be talking two hours, probably more. <laughs> but get the book, How to Win Him and Keep Him Happy, Secrets to Becoming an Amazing Wife, Nikki Winston. Where can they get this book? Uh, you can get it on Amazon. Okay. Uh, and also you can go to my website, NikkiWinston.org, and see, you know, the other books I have. Yeah. Click through. It'll click through usually to Amazon, but you can find okay. whatever I have on there. She has some other really good books, so make sure you check it out. This will bless you whether you're single and wanting to be married or whether you're already married. Even if you feel like you're an expert, you've been married for a long time, <laughs> it's a good reminder because mm-hmm. we always need reminders. You know, like I said, kind of slap me in the face on some things that it's like I knew yeah. But to know is to also to do, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like you got to. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to really just say, okay, let me, you know, reenact some of these principles in my marriage and my life because my husband does deserve my love and my respect. And he's a great godly man. So why would not want to do that? So I love this. This is awesome. Thank, thank you, you for coming on the podcast. Thank well, you so much we know we had a fun time. We're all <laughs> over. But guys, she's my birthday twin. <laughs> birthday twin. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yes. Check her out. Where can they follow you? On uh, social media? I'm Nikki Winston. Everything's okay. Nikki Winston. And I K I one K. N I K I W I N S T O N. Make sure you guys follow her, check her out. She's so inspiring and empowering. A woman of God, someone that is great to look up to mm-hmm. for a marriage and relationship. So check her out, ladies. And as you know, you can follow me at Sharpie Shine at Max Out Girl. And we hope we said something and encouraged, inspired, and elevated your thinking. Always remember to Max Out Girl. Mm-hmm. I'm Sharpie Shine. Talk to you next time. Bye guys. Mm-hmm.